Welcome to Leisure World as we see it, episode number six. Mary App is not with us today. She's on vacation. She'll be with us in the next episode. Today we're going to have two segments uh, to show. One is about the historic society of Leisure World, and the second one will be a duet, uh, singing some nice songs for you. So let's start with the historical society first. Who's this uh, young lady next to you? She seems to have the same last name as you do. Well, she happens to be my wife. Okay. Uh, uh, what's your name? Claire. Claire Walker. Claire Groban Walker. Okay. I rather resent the fact that there's a certain other person in this country that has our last name for a middle name. Is that the uh, liquor's uh, sto uh, the liquor bottle of Johnny Walker? <laughs> no, that was his last name. We couldn't do anything about that. But for anybody to have for a middle name the illustrious name of Walker, and be the person that that person is, is an insult. <laughs> and who? And she said that with a straight face too. Yeah. And, I hope uh, you could cut this. <laughs> and what's your You're title? always getting shocked at the things that I say, but I have tried to be helpful to him now for 63 years. Don't you think he ought to quit being shocked? Yeah, when is he going to learn? <laughs> I just Wait. don't know. <laughs> so what's your title? You, you have an office here with the Historical Society? I, uh, I was the first secretary okay. and the first um, membership chairman. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm Helen Gudkin. I write the uh, plant column for the Golden Rain News. I work for the Garden Club, and I we run a uh, a plant table where people in Leisure World are invited to give us all the things that they don't want, and the along the lines of plants, so that we can sell them to people who do want them. And we raise quite a bit of money that way. Uh, the uh, there isn't anything spe specific that I would say about myself. Okay, now, uh, are there any interesting plants that you have run across that are worth mentioning that you, people don't ordinarily would see? Yes, I would say so. I have a, a 10-year-old or older uh, clump of Peruvian lilies that are very, very beautiful, very fragrant, and most people have never seen them and they bloom for almost a month in the month of August. Uh, the other day I was asked about a plant that the, some woman has and she couldn't figure out what it was and she called me and she asked me what I thought it was and after a little research, I have at least a hundred books on plants, uh, I found the name of it and I called her and I told her and it just <laughs> it was interesting to find that I had one exactly alike in my own garden. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. What is your name? My name is Shirley Burns, okay. and I'm the secretary of the Historical Society. And I was always a member since I moved in 12 years ago, but not active. And then one day they needed a secretary, and I figured I could work that into my schedule for them. But only on the premise that I realize the importance of the historical society. Uh, I think that in years to come, the privilege of living in here will have been forgotten. I think uh, our memories are very short, but I think this is an exceptional um, community. And I'm not too sure that you'll ever hear about it again, because uh, the next generation has a generation of baby boomers and, and they react differently but what this community has done and offered for the senior citizens is uh, not compared to anything that has been offered to any senior citizen before um, my father's generation were always worried would they have 
something to eat? Would they have a house? Would they have? Well, we don't. The senior citizens today are uh, a unique group, and they're volunteers and they're voters. And I think this should be noted and kept in history. Thank you very much, Sherman. Okay. Irma Chapin. Okay, That's Irma. My name. And uh, do you recently? I hear you got promoted into an office here. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> A very important position because it's for, for the uh, historical society, which I think is about as important as anything we have going around here. So, And about me, I've lived here 20 years, and every day has been a pleasure. And uh, anything that I can contribute toward this or anything else in the leisure world, I'll be very happy to do. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm Ann Smolin, and we're sitting in the Museum of the Seal Beach Leisure World Historical Society. It's a beautiful place in Clubhouse One, and it, everyone should come in and see the wonderful history that is available here. We have different collections from many clubs through the years, and it's just an interesting thing to do and you, you'll be surprised at how much you'll enjoy it. It's open at this time on Tuesday and Thursday from 2 to 4 p.m. So please do stop by. Is there any admission? It, no admission charge at all and clubs and organizations within Leisure World are welcome to give us their collections to, so that we can have them here for other people to enjoy. It's Kenneth Walker. I am the president of the Leisure World Historical Society. I moved here with my wife from the East Coast about 10 years ago. I moved into the apartment that my parents moved into initially in 1962. I am a professional historian, as is my wife, and when we moved here, knowing a good deal about the background and the historic importance of Leisure World, we were rather surprised to discover that there was no historical society. There had been one or two attempts to create them, but they had not been successful. So we went to the administration and said, how do we go about creating a historical society? And they proceeded to tell us to put a notice in the newspaper and to see if we can get a group that were interested, which we did. And that is how the society uh, initially began. It's very important that this be done because this is the first subsidized housing for the elderly, uh, subsidized by the federal government in the country. There were people living here when we came who were initial move-ins. And so to get what records we could and reports on how this community evolved was, we thought, very important. And that is a significant function of the society. Over time, we have collected all sorts of documents and memorabilia from the very beginning to up to the present time. Papers, photo albums, uh, oral histories, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, records of people publications that were written by people here. This is the right, and these are examples of the kinds of materials that we are perpetuating and that are available for the use and enjoyment of all members of this community. And from people on the outside if they wish to come in and see what we have available for them. The materials are here to provide a quite complete, I think, overall picture of how this community has evolved.
Tom Barrett, and I'm Vice President of the Historical Society, and I was helped in getting the museum set up here. As Ann said, when we're open, there's always a docent here to tell, tell people around. We'll start out, we, we've collected club memorabilia. The Lions Club was a very active club for many years in the Leisure World, and when it, it went out of business about five years ago, we received a number of its, its uh, memorabilia, including this is their, their, uh, their flag they used at all their meetings. Uh, the room at the, below the, the Lions Club is the, uh, some, some of the partial videotapes we have. We have tapes from the, uh, the, the, the Porta Pack Producers Club and also the Video Producers Club. And we're gaining more, more tapes all the time. We have probably upwards of 400 tapes now and a couple hundred more we're getting, which documents the last uh, 30 years of Leisure World's time. Uh, in here are oral histories of uh, early move-ins on, uh, on discs. Uh, we have about 30 of these, which we have documented people uh, in their experiences in the leisure world. Now, what's an, what would be an oral uh, well, document? Well, someone would be someone just talking about their, their time. I remember that, that Ken interviewed one couple who lived in Mutual 2, and they talked about that they moved to here before there was a Westminster Boulevard, and they used to talk about horses putting their heads over the top of the wall. And uh, they, they, they had horses' heads when they first moved here. And the life, they talk about high life as it has been in the leisure world. And uh, they have their experiences, where, why they moved here, where they came from, what they remember about the early days of the leisure world. Uh, then below here are just our histories of our books. Also some things that, um, of the early years, uh, here's an original key that each, each resident got which says Rossmore, which is the original name for Seal Beach Leisure World, Rossmore Leisure World, and they got that, and if you were lucky, you also got a, a, a pin and a tie tack when you moved here, and each one get, got it. Uh, then we have, for instance, this was a gold medallion community, and it was the largest gold medallion community uh, ever, ever done, uh, and when they opened up here in 1962, Ronald Reagan, who then was the, was the spokesman for General Electric, was here for the opening ceremonies. And you'll find these all over the community, uh, in, in the cement and on the, on the doorbells. Uh, then Leisure World, when it was first uh, done, had uh, China. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had about 400 piece set. This is a gravy boat from the set. It was done by, uh, by, by it's Franciscan ware, done by Gladding McBean in, 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 Long, in Glendale. And uh, over the years, the pieces got broken and uh, lost, and now we have about 150 pieces of that 400 piece uh, place setting. Okay, now I, I have a question. Uh, Canard, the Canard ship had its own china. Most fancy ships have their own china, and so Leisure World had their own china. Now, was this china used by the residents, or what was the occasion? Yeah, it was used in the clubhouses by the residents. Uh, for various occasions and, and functions. Interestingly enough, we have all kinds of this china, but we have only one broken cup. So like everybody else, like Canard and everybody else, we, all the cups have gotten damaged or lost over the years. So if there's someone listening to this uh, program and they have a good cup of the uh, Leisure World china, mm -hmm. could they donate it to the... They uh, certainly could. Yeah. We think, you know, any, any piece of the china they have. We've had actually used some of the china on uh, several of our historical societies uh, uh, afternoon uh, get-togethers with cookies and this kind of thing. So we, we're always looking for more China. Um, over here are uh, our books done by, by, res by people who lived in Leisure World. Uh, some more of them are over in our exhibit in Clubhouse too, but you'll see that there are numbers of books. All these people were authors who lived in Leisure World at one time. Some of the books were written before they came here. Many of them are written uh, after they came here. Many of them are, are biographies of their life and their experiences in, in the world. This over here is a plaque which used to be in Clubhouse 2. At one time we had the largest uh, survivors of World War I, and this was the World War I barracks. And uh, it, was, it, it was here, and, and when, when the last one died, we have uh, put it over here to remind them. And we have, here's their, their history which was prepared for them and, and goes back to the early days of Leisure World. As I say, they were the largest uh, barracks left when they, when they finally when the, by the time they moved here to Leisure World. Then back here on the wall we have, uh, these are all pins from the, the, the whirlers, the, the square dancers, and from various groups and places they went to, uh, one of the couples saved all their pins. And then here we also have the Leisure World paper on, uh, on microfish. And we've got about uh, 35 years of it on microfish 
and their discs are all filed down there. And again, they're available for research. So if you want to research by actually using microfiche or the actual documents, we have both available to you. And that pretty much gives you an idea of what we have in here, and there's many more things to look at to come into the museum. Now I understand you also have a second display uh, of uh, objects? Yes, we do. There's, a, there's two display cases in the lobby of Clubhouse 2, which, which we change uh, oh, every few months. And they're, they're very interesting things over there. Uh, various uh, activities and uh, people in the Lichy world, their, their objects and things they've collected, as well as historical documents. Okay, well thank you very much for showing us around. <laughs>